With DSM-7, Synology disable USB serial support for ZigBee adapters that you would typically need for ZigBee to NQTT. In this video, I will show you how to solve that problem. Hello and welcome to my channel which is all about building an affordable DIY smart home that supports Apple HomeKit using HomeBridge and ZigBee to NQTT. And I've done tons of tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now with the release of DSM-7, there were a lot of joy and a lot of pain. And one of that pain was disabling USB serial support for ZigBee adapters that you would typically use with ZigBee to MQTT. And that put off a lot of users for not migrating to DSM-7. I learned it the hard way. So in this video, we will go enable that USB serial support for a ZigBee adapter. Plus as a bonus, I will also show you how to install MQTT as well as ZigBee to MQTT using DSM-7. So this video, you will definitely need a Synology NAS that already has DSM-7 already installed and you're already using it. And for the ZigBee adapter, I will be using the Sonoff uh, ZigBee 3.0 dongle together with a USB extension. So what we're going to do first is go and access Synology uh, page and then we will take it from there. Now, this is my Synology server. So just let me log in. And just for the sake of proof, this is DSM-7. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go and access terminal. And what you want to do is SSH into it. And the first command you want to run is called LSUSB. It's not picked up. So just let me remove it out and install it back again. And let's try it one more time. So you see now that the Sonos ZigBee dongle has been found. Now, if I change directory to dev and type ls, you will see that it hasn't found the TTY USB zero that defines the ZigBee adapter. So you don't see it over here. So DSM-7 hasn't identified. So the first step is to find out what kind of architecture are you using? So in my case, this model is DS218 plus. So let me look up for DS. And the architecture is Apollo Lake. So it's in this column right here. Package architecture, DS218 plus, Apollo Lake. Now what we're gonna do is first go and find out where are this USB serial drivers that was created by this fantastic person. And in my case, it's Apollo Lake. So I'm gonna click on it. And what we're gonna do is we need to copy these USB serial drivers into our Synology kernel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this towards the right. And to assist with this tutorial, I also have a link to this page that shows you all of the commands that you need to do. Now, remember, it all depends on your architecture package. In my case is Apollo Lake. So here are all of the Apollo Lake. Now in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first log in as a sudo super user. You wanna put in your password, and then I'm gonna run these three commands. Once that is done, you want to type exit, and now we're going to change directory to the modules. Now, these are the four files we are going to transfer for USB serial drivers, and then we're going to insert it into the kernel. So the first command is this one. Once that's copied, you want to go ahead and insert it into the kernel module. Let's go ahead and do the same for the next three. Now let's say you have another model. All you have to do is go back to parent directory and select any one architecture. Only all you have to do is right click on each of the files, copy link, and all you have to type is sudo wget and command v to paste it. And then type in the next command, sudo insert module ins mod. This is the destination and paste that file that you're loading. It's that simple. Now from here, once I've done all of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to configure an auto load script. So I wanna go ahead and just copy these files. Again, this is all for Synology NAS 218 plus. And then I'm gonna give it the admin right, and then I'm just going to load it. Now with this, you don't need to restart your Synology NAS. It's already done automatically with the last command. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that dev directory and I'm gonna type ls. You will see that it's found right here. After running these commands, we are able to identify the ZigBee adapter using those commands and inserting all of the USB serial drivers into the kernel module. It's that simple and you can do the same for other architectures that you have same command lines, all you have to do is just change the 
links from the parent directory. Now, with that being said, I will show you right now how easy it is to go ahead and install Zigbee to MQTT. Again, I also have link on how to configure it and you can use that as well. Now, one of the things I've taken to assumption is you have a fixed volume one directory and all of your containers are located within Docker. So that's how I'm going to configure it. If there's anything different on your setup, all you need to do is change the destination. So if, if yours is other volume name, you need to update that and even the folder. So in my case, everything is nested within the Docker folder. So I'll go ahead and copy these three commands. Go ahead and copy the config and let's go ahead and set up Docker. Now let's go back to Synology, open up Docker, go to container. You'll see that MQTT is already installed. So let's go and check that service. Let's go and open up MQTT Explorer and the IP address is doc3, no username and password, connect. That's where MQTT is up and running. Now the next one is let's go ahead and install Zigbee to MQTT. Let's go to that page and we're going to create some more directories. Again, the default is volume one. Everything's nested within Docker. If your setup is different, please update the destination. Last command is to go and set up the container. That's about it. We have the container installed. However, when Zigbee to MQTT runs for the first time, it's going to find an error to find the location of the MQTT front end. So what we're going to do is go ahead and stop it. Let's go to file station, go to Zigbee to MQTT, go to data, and we do double click configuration.yml. And we go back to this link that I have over here that includes information for front end and some of the advanced configurations. So I'm just going to copy all of this, go back here, paste it. First is to go and update the information for MQTT. So it's on the same server, .86.3, no username and password. We know that the adapter is TTY USB 0, front end is 8081, access is 86.3. That's the only setup you need. Let's go ahead and save, go to Docker and start service. Let's open up Zigbee to MQTT, go to log, and you'll see that the service has connected with the MQTT server and the front end is already started. So let's go and open up the front end, which is 38081. You have Zigbee 2 MQTT setup. And just like that, we enable the Zigbee adapter and the USB serial support with DSM 7. So now any USB support you have, you can do that. We went ahead and installed MQTT and Zigbee to MQTT, providing you now that full Zigbee support for the Synology NAS that you have in your house with DSM 7. If you want more Homebridge plugin tutorials, I have them right here. Or if you want to set up your own NAS, I have it right here. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, happy automation, and have a nice day.